You're watching UNICEF Television. Grim news greets Dr. Kaimba as he arrives at Mongo Regional Hospital in central Chad. This man's three-year-old son has just died, another victim of malnutrition. We did all we could. Unfortunately, the boy was too weak. There was nothing we could do for him. This is really sad news for us this morning. We don't like to start the day like this, but it happened, and that's the reality here at this center. One in five children in Chad dies before their fifth birthday. One in 16 suffers from severe acute malnutrition, which can permanently damage their health. If children don't get enough basic nutrition before age two, the synapses in their brains won't grow right. That can cause serious handicaps as they grow up. He's two years old and he weighs five and a half kilos. Normally at this age, he should weigh 12 to 15 kilos, but he's not even as heavy as a one-year-old. In rural Chad, one out of every 28 children suffers from severe acute malnutrition. The sky-high rate is caused by widespread drought across the Sahel, the region across the southern edge of the Sahara. Climate change is only making matters worse, exacting a crushing toll on the region's small farmers. Their meager harvests leave them mired in poverty, with never enough to eat. These children, already weakened by malnutrition, are trapped in a vicious cycle of disease. It's a cycle where social and cultural issues also play a powerful role. Dr. Kayimba sees it every day at the Therapeutic Nutrition Center, opened by UNICEF at the Mongo Hospital. The main causes that we see here, first of all, it's poverty, because the people are poor and don't really have resources, and they live in polygamous households. There's also the problem of child marriages. The women who come to the center get married between age 12 and 15. More often in a household, there are many people, children, wives, and husbands, but there's not enough for everyone to eat. Since the center opened in January 2012, Dr. Kaimba and his team have saved more than 700 children who were on the brink of death, like this boy, whose 25-year-old mother has lost four of her eight children. This boy came because of diarrhea and vomiting. He had a fever too. Now he's stable, he's eating well, and they'll leave soon. <laughs> This is thanks to UNICEF's work here. That's why these children are doing well. They're saved. UNICEF's contribution here is really significant. That contribution includes scaling up nutrition programs across the eight countries in the Sahel. This helps thousands of children not only survive, but to thrive. In Chad, Donor support has allowed UNICEF to open more than 200 treatment centers to shore up the government's fragile health system. To make sure the centers work at their best, UNICEF has strengthened its offices across the region, including here in Mongo. The doctors, nutritionists, and logistical experts on the team here make sure that supplies flow smoothly to this remote town in central Chad. They're also training paramedics to deploy in the field to find and treat severely malnourished children as quickly as possible. Children are cared for and monitored at the center closest to them. The biggest in the region is in West Mongo, now home to an outpatient nutrition center. Jean-Pierre Mansumaji, a new UNICEF nutrition officer, makes regular visits to ensure that everything is working well. You've already measured the circumference? 109. Okay, that's good. The scale is well calibrated, but it needs to be checked with each weighing. 5.4.
Detailed measurements are taken because severe acute malnutrition isn't just about skinny kids. Some children are force-fed cassava and have swollen bellies. By making children seem physically larger, that could hide severe malnutrition. Children are admitted to the program based on three criteria. The first is that the weight for height ratio should have a z-score less than three. The second is that the mid-upper arm circumference is less than 115 millimeters. And the third is that edema is graded between plus one and plus three. A child only has to meet one requirement. For those who do, their mother is taken across the hall for a final consultation and an appetite test. They have 30 minutes to give their children a food supplement, basically a peanut butter enriched with sugar and vitamins. It's designed specifically to treat cases of acute severe malnutrition. Children who struggle to finish are so malnourished that their lives are already in danger. This baby is one of them. He'll be rushed to hospital for treatment. This child is luckier. He'll be taken into the program. His mother will receive a weekly supply, an amount based on the child's weight. She'll need to come back every week until he's completely better. So far, this center has saved more than 500 children. UNICEF says that's because patients stick to their regimen and because of the work of nine newly trained paramedics. Before wrapping up his visit, Jean-Pierre explains to a local volunteer how to improve his awareness campaign to make women more aware of the importance of nutrition. If you hold it down low and only show one person, the others won't see. So you have to hold it high like this. Some children are relatively fortunate. They aren't severely malnourished. To keep them on the right track, their mothers are taught about healthy eating, to improve their daily diets, and to cut out bad habits. Community outreach plays an important role in the fight against malnutrition. Outreach volunteers teach families about good, basic health. They also track the project of children in their villages during the course of their treatments. Abdurrahim Masadi is a volunteer in Kulji, 15 kilometers outside Mongo. The village has 250 households, all polygamous. They have 1,500 children. Today, Abderrahim is visiting a mother whose child has just finished treatment. Saija is the first wife in a polygamous family. She's illiterate and doesn't know her age or the ages of her two oldest daughters. In Chad, fewer than one in six births are recorded. Have you been back to the nutrition center? No, because my child is better now. But you're still giving him the porridge they taught you to make. Yes, that's good, thank you. When she can afford it, she prepares her son a porridge with fresh ingredients, a recipe she learned from outreach workers. I put in millet, some beans, a bit of peanut butter, and sugar. Since I started making him this porridge, he doesn't get sick anymore. They also taught me to use soap to wash his hands and mouth before meals. Saija also rests easier because now she knows how to get help. She now understands the importance of good hygiene and good nutrition. She still dreams of having more children. That's the simple measure of her worth in the eyes of her husband. A few doors down, Abdurrahim visits a mother who's just had her eighth baby. He offers congratulations and then takes the opportunity to give some basic health advice and to encourage her to space out the births of any more children. Abdurrahim reminds her to register the baby's birth and to take the infant to the health center for vaccinations. Most importantly, he urges breastfeeding for the first six months. There's no better way to prevent malnutrition. But hygiene is also crucial. Access to water and sanitation is lower in Chad than almost anywhere in the world. In Game, a village 40 kilometers from Mongol, UNICEF has brought in sustainable solutions to the delight of these young girls who each want a chance to operate the pedals of their new wells. Is it easy to pump? Well, it's not hard. You can do it easily. Are things better now with the wells? 
Yes, because before we collected water from far away, and there was never enough. These wells have changed many things. Before, we used river water that was polluted. There was a lot of disease, children who got diarrhea. That's all better now. <laughs> UNICEF financed the digging of wells, but it's up to the villagers to maintain them. The program also encourages them to dig their own latrines, at their own expense, near their homes. Improved sanitation makes dramatic improvements in children's health. For women and girls, fetching water is now a lot easier, and the children are much healthier. The village chief is a big fan. It used to be a big problem, especially for the women, who had to go a long way to get some privacy to relieve themselves. Sometimes, they waited until dark, when it's more dangerous. Now, our living conditions are much better. Improving hygiene in Chad's villages is one part of the solution. Another important step is expanding access to health care, which currently covers only half the population. That's why UNICEF continues to support the government in opening new centers, like this one in Bagua, 50 kilometers from Mongo. This center will save hours of walking for mothers who live in the surrounding region. Hello, sir. Hello. How are you? I'm good. This is the delivery room. This is the dressing room. Jean-Pierre Masimaji is visiting the new center with the nurse, who Jean-Pierre has recently trained for the nutrition program. That's for severe malnutrition. That's the training we did last time. That's the summary of the training. Are you following me? Setting up a nutrition program is a complex task for health workers. So Jean-Pierre will be there to help with the first children. And then he'll come back regularly to make sure things are on track. Like I said, we've brought you supplies so the program can get going next week. UNICEF still needs to open more centers, like this one in Bagua, to respond to the growing needs of children whose futures are threatened by malnutrition. Opening new centers will deepen cooperation on the ground among Chad's government, international organizations, and NGOs. Between January and November 2012, their efforts saved more than 127,000 children, bringing hope and relief to the mothers and children of Chad. You've been watching UNICEF Television.